All right, superb. So we are live on YouTube as well, and uh, there are a lot of you who have joined us on Zoom as well. <clears throat> hi everyone. Hi Sanya. Hi Sujan. Arpit. Ilima. Ishika. Vibhav. Hi all of you. Hope uh, you guys are doing well. Hope the slat went well for you, and hope all the due jet aspirants are waiting for their exams to get announced. Now I am Aditya Shikhar. I take care of all the law activities for IMS GSA. Uh, let me confirm whether I am uh, able to see myself. Yeah, just a second, guys. All right. Hi everyone. This is Aditya Shekhar. I take care of all the law activities. Uh, do let me know in the chat box if you are able to see me, hear me, and see the screen properly. Please go ahead and write it down on the chat box. All right. Hi Harsimar. Hi Diddi. Hi everyone else. Uh, yes. So I think that query has already been resolved by Weber. So for those of you who are a part of the top 150 GK roundup sessions and you have CLAT in uh, 2021, which is on 23rd of July, uh, you guys can go ahead and uh, check out the session. The recordings of this session will be available on YouTube. So you can watch these uh, sessions bath maybe as well. Uh, and it is advisable for you guys to go ahead and check out the 150 roundup session if at all you are giving your flat in uh, uh, this year. For the rest of you, we are here. Yet again, we are meeting for the weekly current uh, catch-up session. Uh, so this time, it is uh, more or less everything about uh, the reshuffle which has happened uh, on the cabinet level. And, uh, uh, you know, it keeps on happening. And Narendra Modi government has that acumen when it comes to understanding whether the ministries are working for them or not. So this has happened. We will be covering a lot of sports news as well and a lot of uh, uh, news related to vaccine uh, development uh, as well. All right. So without any further ado, let's quickly go ahead and uh, check out these slides. Right. So this is the Indian Olympic Association's announcement that world boxing champion and uh, uh, men's hockey team captain will be India's flag bearers in the opening ceremony of Tokyo Olympics. So who are we talking about? Who is the men's hockey team captain for India? Who are we talking about, guys? Please write down the chat box. Who is the men's hockey team captain? Yes. So one is Manpreet Singh. Right, Manpreet Singh is the current men's hockey team captain. And if I talk about the option two, which who has uh, won the silver medal in 2018 World Wrestling Championship, this is Bajrang Punia, who had won the Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna Award back in 2019. Uh, he seems to have won the Fikki uh, Championship uh, in 2020, and he has also been awarded as Padma Shri. So uh, Manpreet Singh, he was elated when uh, the Indian Olympic Association uh, uh, announced that he will be one of the two people who will be bearing India's flag in the Tokyo Olympics. Right? So this, of course, is Manpreet Singh. And the second option here uh, is Bajrang Punia, who will be carrying the flag at the closing ceremony of Tokyo Olympics. All right. So, of course, this is International Olympic Committee, which we are talking about. Let's look at the questions here. Who is the current president of International Olympic Committee? Guys, quickly answer. 
what should be the answer here who is the current president of the international olympic committee is it jack stoney is it thomas bach is it john coitis or none of the above yes yes so as a lot of you have correctly answered this is thomas bach which we are talking about in fact all the three options in front of you have been uh, associated with the presidentship of international olympic committee in fact jack slogi was the first president of international olympic uh, committee and he is also the honorary president of the international olympic uh, committee the current president of international olympic committee is thomas bach all right is a famous lawyer as well uh, and uh, he uh, basically belongs uh, to germany and he has been uh, uh, an olympic fencer as well all right let's move ahead the international olympic committee is a non government sports organization which is headquartered in brussels paris geneva or lausanne in switzerland what should be the correct answer here yes this is d lausanne in switzerland it uh, is headquartered uh, there and it's it's actually the most important committee when it comes to uh, understanding which country will represent and how the enti entire uh, 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 organize um, you know the entire event will take place all right uh, which of the following statements are to true there are 206 national olympic committees officially recognized by ioc ioc was founded by pierre de coubertin and dimitrios vikelis in Yes before we go ahead and answer that i would like to talk about the indian olympic uh, uh, committee or association which again was instrumental in sending or landing india as one of the countries uh, participating in the olympics so the first time when anyone represented india in the olympics was back in 1900 this was uh, norman preacher who was sent to represent india uh, the team uh, started getting represented from 1920 in fact it was uh, uh, a, a very famous uh, tata uh, uh, chairman he was also known as dorab ji tata he along with the governor of bombay uh, they had arranged for the indian team to be sent to the olympics back in 1920 and it started from uh, there uh can anyone tell me who is the current uh, uh, chairman or uh, current president of the indian uh, olympic association please write down on the chat box guys who is the current president of the indian olympic association in fact this is the body uh, which sends the uh, team to the olympics to the asian games in fact to the commonwealth games as well so who is the president there yes so this is narendra batra which we are talking about right and uh, with respect to this question both the options are correct here uh, there are 206 national olympic committees uh, which are recognized by the international o olympic uh, uh, committee and the ioc was founded by pierre de coubertin and uh, dimitrios vikelis back in 1894 In fact, uh, Pierre de Coubertin, he is also known as father of modern Olympic Games. He was himself an educator and seems to have done law. So, right. All right. So these were the first three uh, basic questions. Let's move to the next passage here. Right. So this talks about naval exercises and, in fact, a Talwar class Russian built frigate. All right. Go ahead and read this passage, guys. for those of you for those of of our friends who have joined us on youtube do uh, comment uh, do subscribe uh, you can check out our telegram page as well it's given in the description 
so do go ahead and subscribe to our channel a lot of interesting stuff uh, keep keeps on uh, 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 you know getting uh, 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 or being presented to you and it's basically for your development and for your journey to get into one of the best uh, national universities all right right so if i talk about the first option we are talking about tyrrhenian sea so this is basically a part of mediterranean sea and it's right uh, uh, near italy in fact how many of you have seen godfather how many of you have seen the classic movie godfather guys comment yes yes do you remember sicily yes yes so this exactly is there only so it's 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 rather engulfed uh, with sicily in its uh, 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 south and uh, corsica island uh, to its north so that's the sea which we are talking about and that's where uh, indian naval ship tabar went all right and of course uh, the second uh, option here which is uh, the a uh, naval headquarters of western fleet this is in mumbai which we are talking about in fact indian navy has three headquarters so if i talk about the southern uh, uh, fleet it's uh, headquartered in kochi if i talk about the eastern uh, fleet uh, it's headquartered in vizag and if i talk about the western fleet it is headquartered in uh, mumbai right so this was an amazing news so the indian naval ship the uh, talwar class russian built frigate has just re returned from a naval drill in tyrrhenian sea with the italian navy yes yes these are relevant for more or less every uh, uh, you know important uh, entrances All right, let's look at the questions here. India is participating in which of the following bilateral naval exercises with the French Navy? Is it Exercise Varuna? Is it Passage Exercise? Is it Exercise Indra? Or is it Exercise Konkan? For those of our friends who joined us on YouTube, do hit on the subscribe button. right so of course this is uh, varuna as most of you have correctly mentioned uh, this is the exercise which indian navy keeps on performing or rather having with the french navy if i talk about the other exercises uh, passage or pass x is the naval exercise which indian navy uh, organizes with the us navy uh, exercise indra is uh, the in fact the name comes from the portmanteau of uh, uh, two countries which is india and russia so ind is from india and ra is the portmanteau of uh, russia and therefore the exercise is name is uh, uh, indra uh, exercise konkan uh, is a naval exercise by uh, the indian navy along with the royal navy of uh, uh, the great britain so this time i think back in 2019 it was the 16th konkan exercise which had happened the correct answer for the uh, current question is of course uh, varuna which is the indian naval exercise or rather drill with the french navy all right guys let's move ahead which of the following ins ships belong to the talwar class is it ins trishul is it ins tarkash is it ins teg or all of the above yes so the talwar class of course are stealth guided missile frigates and these are designed by russia all the ins in front of you which is trishul tarkash and teg are the ships which belong to the talwar class so the correct answer here is all of the above all right which of the following statements are true about ins tabar it was commissioned back in 2004 in kaliningrad russia 
it's also slated to participate in the bilateral exercise as exercise konkan with the royal navy which we just talked about how india and uh, the, the the indian navy and the royal navy of great britain uh, they conduct this uh, bilateral exercise known as exercise konkan back in 2019 it was konkan 16 which had happened so which of the following options here is correct about ins talbar guys talbar guys yes so both the statements are spot on it was commissioned back in 2004 in kaliningrad russia and this is basically uh, 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 you know uh, one of uh, the uh, 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 one of the stealth uh, ships of uh, talwar class and they uh, it, it is slated to participate in the bilateral exercise of uh, konkan as well All right, so both statements one and two are correct. Let's move to the next passage, which talks about COVID, COVID vaccine. We have had a lot of problems with this amazing disease which we have in front of us. Let's talk about the vaccines which are there in front of us. So the passage talks about, uh, of course, the two relevant vaccines for us. So I hope all of you have gotten. your respective doses of these two vaccine uh, covid shield and covaxin are uh, still awaiting clearances by the european medicine agency and the world health organization so according to an nst report at least eight european nations have recognized covid shield uh this means that these nations relax their travel bans on india indians immunized with covid shield will be able to visit them aside from these eight nations Finland and Latvia are said to have accepted COVID shield, while Estonia has approved both COVID shield and Covaxin. COVID shield is also accepted for travel in Switzerland and Iceland. These were worries in India after the EU launched the Green Pass, a travel pass among European nations for people vaccinated with one of the four vaccines. So, what are these four vaccines? This is. Com Comir Nati by Pfizer or BioNTech, Moderna by Dash, Vaxer Vaxer Viria by Dash, and Janssen by Johnson and Johnson. So Moderna is produced by which company? In fact, Moderna and Vaxer uh, Vaxer Viria are produced by the same company, which is the company which we are talking about here. In fact, the Indian uh, equivalent, of course, is Covid Shield. right so this is astrazeneca which has produced uh the vaccine here and the indian equivalent is covishield right now let's talk about uh, the body which has been interested with the responsibility of producing such an amazing vaccine so we are talking about serum institute of india this is probably the biggest drug manufacturer across the world and who is the ceo of serum institute of india yes punawala in fact i was watching a, a very famous interview of uh, uh, cyrus punawala with one of the india uh, today uh, uh, anchors and my god the fancy cars the fancy lifestyle the helicopters everything was fancy about that guy so his son currently adar punawala is uh, the ceo of serum institute of india which is manufacturing covishield right the eu green pass will enable frictionless travel among eu 27 member states guys uh, can you tell me which is the recent country which has be you know which has gotten away from european union so this of course is great britain this happened back in 2020 in fact great britain uh, uh signed the accession back in 1973 and uh, the criteria to get into european union is the copenhagen criteria in fact the first six countries uh, which uh, uh, were uh, involved in forming european union were uh, belgium france italy uh netherlands luxembourg and west germany right so these are the six countries which were there to form european union currently it has 27 member states with great britain exiting uh we saw how brexit happened and how it was so controversial uh this finally happened back in january 2020 
All right, India has urged EU member states to individually recognize COVID shield and Covaxin and to treat vaccinated Indians in the same manner as those vaccinated in EU countries. This request is accompanied by a diplomatic push that if COVID shield and Covaxin are not recognized in EU nations, those who have received EU vaccines will likewise be denied quarantine exemption in India. So Indian government seems to play games to get appropriate entry to the European Union nations. All right, let's look at the questions now. Who is the current executive director of European Medicines Agency? Emmer Cook, Lorraine Nolan, Anthony Borg, Thomas Ricard. Guys who have joined us on YouTube, do hit the subscribe button. It will mean a lot to us. Right, so we are talking about Emma Cook, who is the current executive director of European Medicines Agency. In fact, this is the agency which is uh, responsible for evaluating and supervising the medicinal products used in, used in the European Union countries. Right, so MR Cook is currently the executive director of European Medicines Agency. All right, India will be offering Dash platform as the digital public good to other countries run their COVID-19 vaccine vaccination drives. Which is the platform which India will be offering to other countries to run their COVID-19 vaccination drives? Is it Umang? Is it Arogya Setu? Is it Covin or none of the above? Arogya Setu, of course, as you might or might not know, this is basically to contract, uh, to basically trace people who have got uh, COVID and uh, to warn people who are in the vicinity to be aware that something like that is happening around them. So Arogya Setu clearly is not the answer. Between Umang and COVID, what should be the answer, guys? Please write it down on the chat box. Yes, yes, Sojan, spot on, Anushka, Vishwaraj, Kanika, Parth, Harshita, all of you are correct. So we are talking about the COVID vaccine intelligence network, which is also known as COVID. Uman is an app which basically is to access center and state government services. Right, so the correct answer here is COVID or the COVID vaccine intelligence network. In fact, this has superseded uh, IBIN, which was a cloud-based IT solution for planning, implementing and evaluating the COVID-19 vaccination in the country. So COVID, it supersedes uh, EVIN, E-V-I-N, and it is the platform which India will be offering to other countries to run their COVID-19 vaccination drives. All right, which of the following statements are true concerning the Green Pass? It is EU digital COVID certificate, which will be required to travel in EU from 1st July. The pass does not exempt the travelers from mandatory quarantine. What should be the correct answer here, guys? Yes, disappoint a lot of you. This is just one. So EU digital COVID certificate, it will be required to travel in EU from 1st July. All right, but they still need to go or, or rather undergo a mandatory quarantine. All right, let's move ahead. Let's look at the passage now. So of course, this is the cabinet reshuffle, which we are talking about. It happened uh, and we saw a lot of reshuffling especially when it comes to the, uh, 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 you know, the IT uh, ministry, uh, the law ministry, the health ministry, uh, all of it has been changed. So Mansuk Mandivya, who is a Rajya Sabha member from Gujarat, has been appointed as the health minister of India. And he has succeeded. Uh, of course, what should be the answer here? Who has he succeeded, guys? Of course, I hope all of you know. Yes, this is Dr. Harsh Vardhan, who he has succeeded. Right, and he had been in charge of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. 
science and technology and earth sciences since 2019. The, the Prime Minister Modi led NDA has also handed Mandivya the charge of which other ministry? In fact, he was the Minister of State of that ministry in which he has been given the charge of. Yes, so we are talking about the Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers, uh, who, which has been given to uh, Mansukh Mandavia. Right. All right. So let's look at the passage. It is actually actually very critical. Yes, guys, I'm back. Sadly, the Narendra Modi government seems to have fidgeted with the electricity in my room. So I'm quickly sharing my screen again. Let me know if you can see the screen. Yes, can you see the screen, guys? Give me a uh, heads up. Can you see the screen? Please write it down on the chat box. Wherever you are, however you are, hope you are staying safe and sound. All right, superb, superb. So let's look quickly look at the passage. It is very relevant and it talks about the cabinet reshuffle, which has happened, especially when it comes to the health ministry. So aside from reorganizing the ministerial portfolios, the health ministry has been amalgamated with Dash. The decision comes at a critical juncture in country's history as the second wave is still ongoing and the country prepares for impending third wave. With the collaboration of both ministries, a better management of supply of medicine. So this is Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers and the Ministry of Health, which has been amalgamated. So with the, uh, the, the, the idea is to give a better management of uh, supply of medicines and medical equipment as oxygen cylinders uh, a shortage of oxygen cylinders was clearly an issue. We saw that how uh, Delhi was uh, doing extremely bad. In fact, uh, you know, that, that broke my heart when I saw ambassador dying in a parking lot uh, on a, in front of a very famous uh, uh, hospital in Delhi. So, of course, uh, the uh, shortage of oxygen has clearly been one of the major uh, points which the uh, the government uh, clearly seemed to have uh, a pro problem with and in fact that was a problem which was very uh, conspicuous and pertinent and the government was not able to find solution to the problem. Anyway, so this happened. Uh, so, so the idea is that and uh, Mandivya, if I talk about the minister who is in charge of health, this is a guy who was born in middle class family in Gujarat in Bhavnagar district. 
uh, and uh, his political ca- career began in 2002 he was also he is also a rajya sabha member and he has been uh, he has risen his ranks he was a part of a lot of uh, administrative agencies back in uh, gujarat and uh, he is also a direct beneficiary of pradhan mantri uh, bhartiya jan ayushudha uh, uh, pariyojana which is pm B- bjp and he is also recognized by the united nations child emergency fund in may 2019 for his contribution to women's menstrual hygiene so we wish all the best to mansukh pandivya and hope uh, that he is able to tackle the covid problem in the country efficiently all right let's look at the questions now the constitution provides that the rajya sabha shall consist of 250 members of which dash members shall be nominated by the president 11 10 12 or 15 guys what should be the answer here guys quickly write it down on the chat box people who have joined us on youtube please hit the subscribe button it means a ton to us and we'll keep on producing these important and relevant videos for you guys so of course this is uh, 12 uh, the total number of members which are nominated uh, by the president to the rajya sabha in fact if i talk about the composition of rajya sabha that has been given under article 80 of the indian constitution which talks about how 238 members are to be uh, 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 elected so a proportional representation of a single transferable vote and the 12 other members are supposed to be nominated by the president so the correct answer of course here is 12 All right. Which of the following has never been the Minister of Health and Family Welfare? J. P. Nadda, Gulam Nabi Azad, Sushma Swaraj. None of the above. What should be the correct answer, guys? Go ahead and write it down on the live chat window or the chat box in front of you in in Zoom. Sadly, all of them have been a Minister of Health, so the correct answer here is none of the above. All right, just a few more questions, guys. The Department of Ayush, Ayurved, Yoga, Naturopathy, Unani, Siddha, and Homeopathy falls under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Is it a true statement? Is it a false statement? And of course, governing body of Indian Council of Medical Research is presided over by the Union Health Minister. Is it true or is it false? So go ahead and check out the options here. A says only statement one is true. B states only statement two is true. C says both these statements are true. true. D says neither statement one nor statement two is true. What should be the correct answer? Please write down on the chat box, and please go ahead and write it down on the chat box. It's statement two which is correct. Of course, Department of Ayush does not falls under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. It is an isolated and a separate department. Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, as we saw in the passage, it has been amalgamated with Ministry of uh, Chemical Fertilizers to uh, see uh, that the problem of supply of medicines is being met efficiently. All right. So this is the last passage, guys. Let's look at the last passage. So this is uh, uh, the problem of uh, in endangerment of species. So after years of conservation efforts, Chinese officials have declared that giant pandas are no longer endangered and wild. Although they are nonetheless vulnerable with a population outside captivity of 1800, Dash is the chief of Environment Ministry's Department of Nature and Ecological Conservation, and he stated that the reclassification was the consequence of better living conditions of China's efforts to preserve their habitats. Linked, so China seems to have been doing a lot, especially when it comes to wildlife conservation and uh, uh, ensuring that the endangered species are being taken care of properly. He also stated that the declaration. Declaration represented uh, China's recent national efforts to preserve biodiversity. To feed giant pandas, authorities have sought to expand their habitats and replace bamboo forests. Uh, Dash said during a news conference this week that the number of Siberian tigers, Amur leopards, Asian elephants, and crested apes had also visibly increased as a result of ongoing conservation efforts in recent years. China's conservation authorities made the decision five years after Dash removed giant panda from the endangered species list and classed them as vulnerable. All right, what is option one? What is option two? Please comment on the live chat windows. Please write your answers on the Zoom chat window. Guys, go ahead. 
Yes. So the chief of environment ministry uh, department in China is Kui Shuhong, although this is slightly irrelevant and very uh, less probability of being asked in your entrances, nevertheless. Uh, and the correct answer for the option two is uh, the IUCN or the International Union for Conservation of Nature. In fact, this is the body which is based out of France and it is given the responsibility of conserving and uh, 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 basically facilitating the sustainable use of natural resources. So this is IUCN or International Union for Conservation of Nature. All right, let's look at the questions now. Who is the Director General of IUCN? Gretel, Aguilar, Inger, Anderson, Bruno, Oberel, Akim, Steiner. What should be the correct answer here, guys? Yes, so this is Bruno Oberle, who is the current Director General of International Union for Conservation of Nature. All right, let's look at some other questions. The IUCN is the world's most comprehensive inventory of the global conservation status of plant and animal species. So which is the book, which is the most comprehensive inventory when it comes to the global conservation status of plant and animal species? Is it the black book? <coughs> is it the yellow book? Is it the red list or is it the black list? So yes, this is the red list which was produced back in 1964 and it is the world's most comprehensive inventory or the list when it comes to global conservation status of plant and animal species. All right, so red list of threatened species is the correct answer here. Which of the following species of animal are now, now extinct? Great auk, dodo, pyrenean, ibex, all of the above. What should be the correct answer here, guys? Yes, so the first two options are flightless birds. Great auk and dodo, both of them are flightless birds. Pyrenean ibex is a wild goat and all three of them are now sadly extinct. So the correct answer here is all of the above. All right, now let's look at some of the isolated questions. Who among the following is the Union Ministry for Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dealing? Arjun Munda, Giri Raj Singh, Nitin Gadkari, Anurag Singh Thakur. What should be the correct answer here, guys? Please comment on the live chat window or please comment on the Zoom chat box as well. Fisheries, animal, husbandry and dating. So this is Giriraj Singh. In fact, he had also launched Matsya Setu, Matsya of course is fish. So this is an app which is basically for fishermen. He launched that and he is the minister of fisheries, animal husband and dating. What about Arjun Munda? Arjun Munda, in fact, he was also uh, the uh, ex-chief minister of Jharkhand as well. And currently, he is the Tribal Affairs Minister. Nitin Gadkari, of course, uh, continues to hold the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. Anurag Singh Thakur, the Minister of State and Finance Ministry, has been bestowed with the responsibility of taking care of Sports Ministry as well. Right. So the correct answer, of course, is Giriraj Singh, who is given the responsibility of fisheries, animal husbandry and dealing. All right, Indian Army has named a firing range in Gulmarg, Kashmir, after which of the following Indian cinema actress, Madhuri Dixit, Rani Mukherjee, Vidya Balan, or Ashwarya Rai Bachchan? Yes, guys, what should be the correct answer here? Madhuri Dixit, Rani Mukherjee, Vidya Balan, Ashwarya Rai Bachchan. So this is Vidya Balan. She has attended the Gulmarg Winter Festival along with her husband Siddharth Roy Kapoor, which was organized by the Indian Army to recognize her contribution. 
the range has been named after her so this is vidya balan which we are talking about all right the rajasthan government has planned to develop a tiger corridor connecting ranthambore tiger reserve ramgarh visdhari tiger reserve and the dash so which is the tiger reserve which will be connected through a tiger corridor by ranthambore tiger reserve ramgarh visdhari tiger reserve all of them are of course in rajasthan we are talking about the mukundra tiger reserve which again has been planned by the rajasthan government so this corridor will be connecting ranthambore ramgarh and mukundra tiger reserve and uh, this has been done by the efforts of rajasthan government the proposed site for the sanctuary is in bundu district of rajasthan all right let's move ahead just three four more questions haiti's president has been assassinated in the capital port au prince who is the haiti president who has been assassinated john bertrand artiste michel martelli rene preville jovenel moise what should be the correct answer here in fact all these are the presidents uh, of uh, haiti haiti is a very small country in the caribbean province of uh, in the caribbean sea so along with jamaica and other countries which are a part of the caribbean isolated islands so it is there the correct answer here of course is jovenel moise who had been killed and his wife injured uh, in an attack uh, which happened in the capital port au prince in fact john burton arrested was the first haiti president All right. So the correct answer, of course, is Jovenel Moise, if I am able to pronounce that correctly. Which country is the largest number of tall buildings in the world? China, Japan, Singapore, England. What do you mean by tall buildings? Of course, is uh, another pertinent question. So the correct answer here is China, which seems to be the large, which seems to hold the largest number of tall buildings, as it has fourteen hundred skyscrapers with a height of one fifty meters. right so china is the correct answer for this question all right this is the last question for the day razor pay along with dash has launched mandate hq a secure payment interface mastercard maestro american express paypal In fact, Razor Pay is another unicorn. Guys, tell me what a unicorn is. VBA students, go ahead and write it down on the chat box. What do you mean by a unicorn? Which company is known as a unicorn? The companies who have a valuation or rather funding of more than one billion dollars. So Razor Pay, of course, is one of the unicorns. So it, along with which other company, has launched Mandate HQ. it is mastercard along with which the fintech or financial tech uh, unicorn razor pay had collaborated to form a secure payment interface all right so thank you so much all of you uh, it was lovely seeing so many faces not so many faces so many voices at least and uh, it's always a pleasure this is your uh, mentor i am aditya shekar signing off for the day do hit the subscribe button on the youtube channel we'll see you soon take care all the best stay safe